This is a, a trial of a new light board we've got set up in the Faculty of Engineering Environment and Computing at Coventry University. Um, to try it out, I'm going to derive probably the most fundamental equation for structural engineers, and that's the, the bending moment in a simply supported beam. So that's what we're looking at up here. It's a, a beam, it's got a pinned connection at one end and a roller support at the other end. The squiggly lines here is a uniformly distributed load that I'm going to call W, which has units of something like newtons per metre. <clears throat> and the beam is of length L, so everything is completely general. So that's a, a, a general structural configuration sort of picture. Um, the first step really is to create a free body diagram. And to do that, I'm going to, look, going to use a little bit of magic. So um, I've replaced the diagrammatic uh, representation of the supports with two arrows which represent the forces that the supports are applying to the beam. Uh, two arrows upwards. There's no horizontal arrow because there's no horizontal applied forces. So we've got two arrows, each of which push up with the same amount of force, which is half of the total weight acting on the beam. So each of acting with a force of WL over two. So that's a free body diagram um, summarizing all of the forces acting on that beam. To get enough, an understanding of what's going on inside the beam, we need to use the techni technique usually known as something like the imaginary cut, where we cut the beam in an imaginary sort of way, uh, and try and use that technique to understand what's going in, on inside the beam. So for another little bit of magic, uh, I'm going to do just that now. So there's the same beam as before, except it's not as long now. And I'm going to say that I've made the cut at a distance x from the left-hand end, and I'll use a slightly different colour to show the internal forces on the beam. So what we're trying to understand is what's going on at this end of the beam, often called the free end of the beam. And I need to show two forces which summarise what's going on there. One is a shear force acting like that, which I'll call S, and the other is a moment which I'll call M. So M is the bending moment in the beam. It's the amount of twisting force I need to provide to that end of the beam so the rest of the beam feels as it did when it was connected to the other end, which has disappeared now. This is a free body diagram in the same way as the one was before. So all of these forces are acting on a little bit of beam and the net result is the beam's not going anywhere. The forces are all in equilibrium with each other. So knowing that allows us to calculate the two unknowns the shear force S and the bending moment M by using equilibrium considerations alone. Um, so I said at the start of this little piece that it's M that we're going to go for, so we'll start off by figuring out M. And to calculate M, the best equilibrium condition I can use is to consider moment equilibrium about the free end. And that's because that's the one equation which won't include an S in it. So I want to make life easy for myself, so I'm going to take consider moment equilibrium about the free end. Whenever you do calculations, you should always say what you're doing. It doesn't matter how you say it, but you need to say it somehow. So I'm going to use a little bit of shorthand. So I'm going to use the summation symbol. I'm going to say the sum of the moments about the free end equals zero. So that's just saying what I'm going to do. So what sort of things cause a moment about the free end? Well, in no particular order, um, let's put anti-clockwise on one side and clockwise on the other side. We've got a WL over 2, this force at the end. Its lever arm about the moment, the point we're looking at is X. So that causes a moment of WL over 2 times X. That's a clockwise moment about this point here. There's two other forces which cause an anti-clockwise moment, so I'll put those on the other side of an equation. One is the moment which we're trying to find, m, and the other one is the moment caused by this UDL. And sometimes this can be a little bit more tricky to calculate. We need to remember there's two parts to it, and normally we would think of the UDL in terms of its resultant. So, And the resultant is a single force which has the same effect as a UDL. So the total weight of the UDL is its, uh, its value W times by the length X. So that weight, that W uh, UDL weighs 
w times x, and it's acting through a point which is halfway between here and here. So the lever arm is x over 2. So we've got wx times by x over 2. So we can rearrange that to get the equation for m, which is equal to um, wlx over 2 minus wx squared over 2. So this is our equation for m anywhere in the beam. We could put in any value of x and find out what the value of, is, of m is anywhere in the beam. Um, when x is 0, we can see that m is 0. Um, when x is l, we'll also find that m is 0. And that's, that's good news, because that's what we would expect. We could use some um, simple differentiation to find where that function gives us a maximum value to find the maximum value of m. Um, I'll get there another way. Um, we know the maximum value of m will occur when uh, the, the shear force is zero. So let's also quickly um, derive the shear force. We do that in the same way. Um, it's a free body diagram. All of these forces sum to zero in any direction. The quickest way to get to the, the shear force is to look at the sum of the vertical forces. So here I'm just saying what I'm doing. Um, they all sum to zero. Vertical forces here, we've got S acting upwards, we've got WL over 2 acting upwards, and that is all balanced by W times X. So S is equal to WX minus WL over 2. So that's a, a complete equation for shear force, um, capital S. Shear force equals zero when Wx minus Wl over 2 is zero. Therefore, x equals L over 2. So shear force is zero at x equals L over 2. No big surprises. That means that the maximum moment occurs when x equals L over 2. So I can plug that into the equation for m. So m max equals w times l times by l over 2, so that's all over 4, minus w times by l squared over 2, so that's l squared over 8. So the maximum moment in a simply supported beam carrying a UDL which is the equation that every structural engineer probably uses most is equal to WL squared over 8. Thanks for watching.